Gillenor, once perfect, is soon to be forever scarred. Wars lasting thousands of years will ensue, awakening the sleeping giant. Zamorak had ascended. Zaros had disappeared. The Empire was torn in two. The stage was set for an era of warfare. The Third Age began. Aftermath of the Betrayal on Infernus. After Zamorak and the Avernic arrived on Infernus, they began waging a multi-planar war against the Chthonians. Zamorak maintained contact with his followers on Gilinor through the demons that remained on the planet. Over time, a few other Marjorat, such as Palkira, joined him in his crusade. Azanadra. Azanadra and his forces retook Sentistan from the Zamorakians, who then scattered across the mainland. Azanadra then travelled from fortress to fortress, informing the commanders of what had happened, sometimes leaving a small force to assist their defences. The Marjorat Trindine travelled with Azanadra to Carid Et, where she and her Praetorians were left to protect a number of artefacts hidden there by the Inquisition. Today marked the surprise arrival of the Pontifex Maximus, accompanied by the Praetor, the friendly one, praise be to Saros, not that sadistic clown, and their personal guard. Normally, such visits are communicated ahead of time. At first, I thought it but a formality ahead of Lord Saros' visit, but and though I have had hours to try to absorb this news, I still struggle to write these words. Saros is defeated. Saradomin. After Saradomin and Armadil collected the staff and the stone and saw the disappearance of both the Legatus Maximus, and Zaros himself, Saradomin turned his military alliance, which included the Armadillians, the Menophyte Pantheon, and some unknown gods, from defensive to offensive, and began besieging Sentistan, marching their troops over the River Salve, and claiming the surrounding countryside, most notably Silveria. Dragon Riders the hunt begins. During the time of the betrayal, there were only five remaining Dragon Riders. For the Dragon Riders in action during the betrayal, they were hunted down by both troops of Zamorak and of Saros. Apropos was captured by Draken, bled dry and tied to a stake. Balustan and Ablenkian were hunted down by Zerosian Ripper demons. Morvanon and Hannibus lasted a few years longer, but their fates too were sealed. Zamorak's Return The Order of Dis An order of cultists loyal to Zamorak since the betrayal built a lodge in Silveria under the guise of being dedicated to Saradomin. They had a great secret. Beneath it was a portal that led deep below the earth of Forinthri. While Saradomin repeatedly tried and failed to capture the imperial city of Sentistan, the Order gathered the remains of Lornab and smuggled them through the portal of the Star Lodge and rebuilt the dead Colossus. Once again, Lornab would power a portal to Infernus. I founded this lodge so that we may hide in plain sight. Even the name mocks him, and he does not know it. They think it alludes to his star, that it is reverence for him. Never. 
He stomps around now, claiming the humans as his own. Be they of the Empire or not. He snatches up the land and renames it, reshapes it as if that is enough to claim it. We are embedded here, weeds in his garden. Or we'll act as converts to Saradoman on the surface. We'll welcome his sheep in our door. We'll fatten them up with wine and beguile them with our songs. But in our hearts, we carry our true selves. In the dark beneath the lodge, we build. The stars are for our Lord, who will return to us one day. And we must be prepared for that return. In the year 19 of the Third Age, Zamorak arrived through a portal beneath the continent of Ferinthri, with an army of demons larger than that of even Zaros's legions. And thus, the Zerosian civil war began, raging for centuries. Zarosian civil war. With Zamorak's return, the other gods of the world saw his aggression as nothing more than a civil war between the military and the church. Saradomin withdrew the alliance, hoping that the civil war would weaken the empire to the point where he would be able to effortlessly claim it for himself. Imprisonment of Azanadra. After several centuries, the empire still controlled many of its largest cities only losing Carol to a rebellion of werewolves. However, this was not to last. Azinadra, the de facto leader of the Zerosian Empire, was seen as a threat by the Saradominist and Zamorakian leaders alike, and was tricked into a battle in the Caridian Desert by a new military alliance of the two gods' forces. Saradomin and Zamorak were working together. In the midst of the fight, the Zamorakian Majorat used ancient magic to imprison Azanadra's essence within four diamonds. They gave these four diamonds to their more powerful followers, Farid, Damis, Malak, and Kamil. What remained of Azanadra would be imprisoned in the Jaldrocht Pyramid, supplied by the Menophytes, and led by Elidinus and Ichtharin. With Azanadra no longer able to hold the empire together through sheer force of will, the empire began to fall apart. Over the next thousand years, every Zerosian settlement, aside from Karalanga, Dariak, Gorok, and the imperial capital, fell to the onrushing hordes of the gods. God Wars begin. With the fall of Azanadra, the Pontifex Maximus, the other gods noticed the Zerosians were no longer a threat. And the God Wars erupted, raging for centuries. All of the other minor gods began tearing into Zerosian settlements, converting them to their empires and religions. Saradomin was the most successful at this, and the Grand Master of the Zerosian Temple Knights sought to fight him in single combat. The fight ended with Valinius, the Templar Grand Master, converting to Saradominism and bringing most of his order with him, which was a great boon to the Saradominists in the early part of the God Wars. In exchange, the order was permitted to keep their name and most of their traditions. They were renamed the Templi Ordo Saradominis. They were headquartered on the island of Entrana, the location of Saradomin's initial arrival and largest temple. As the forces of the gods rage across the world, Saren again recalls her people to Tiramun and erected a barrier of anima around the continent, impassable to most divine beings, protecting her people from any of the great wars to come. I was wrong about Zaros's legacy. Even now his empire crumbles, beset on all sides by the followers of the other gods. His life's work is being undone by fear and jealousy, and in time will be forgotten entirely. 
the peace that his empire brought to the world is broken, and now the vultures picking at his corpse seek to encroach upon Taranwen. I shan't allow it. I have tasked Clan Kadan with the protection of all the clans and these lands we call home. Baxtorian hold the eastern entrance to the hidden pass with a cadre of Helmen, mages, and scouts, and a small force of Iowerth. While Zaras held the reins of his empire, we were safe. He ensured our lands were left untouched, but that can no longer be relied upon. I shall attune the anima of Tyrion to erect a barrier around us, which should keep us isolated from the others of this world. All elves must retreat into the forests. If Zaras can be forgotten, then so can we. Hopefully, it will buy the time I require. We shall leave the rest of the world to their wars. I have been wrong about so much. I hope that I am not wrong about this. With the gods beginning to rampage across the planet, forcibly converting all they came across, dwarves and gnomes went under the earth, founding great cities that would last thousands of years. Dragon Riders, the hunt continues. Zamorak ordered the three queens of the demons, the Furies, to hunt down the remaining Ulayanka, Morvanon and Hannibus. Morvanon, riding the dragon Gorvek, was hunted down by the queen's hellhounds for a week before she was knocked from a dragon by an arrow and torn apart. Little did anyone know, Gorvek carried Morvanon's egg in his saddle. My time in this cave has been relaxing and it has been good to distance myself from the folly of the people of Gilanor. But it is a short-lived peace. The witch in Acre is still hunting me, even after all these years. I had hoped that I would be forgotten about, allowed to live out my last few years away from all of this conflict. I'm not that lucky. I have moved on from this temporary sanctuary now. I've left my dragon in his cave. He's been a loyal and good friend, and I think it's best to distance myself from him. If I am to be hunted down, at least he might have a chance this way. Our goodbye was painful, but I think he understood. Hannibus would remain on the run for several years until he was captured and turned to stone by the Marjorat Enakra, who kept his petrified remains as a trophy. Carid Et, the fortress, was attacked by a host of Avernic demons under the orders of Zamorak seeking its relics. However, the legion was destroyed at the cost of nearly all of its defenders. Knowing that they needed to protect the secrets of Carid Et with their very lives, Peter Dis, a necromancer in the cult of Orcus, devised a plan to lure a large Icene Torma into the fortress. There, they would be set upon by an army of undead soldiers and demons, reanimated by Peter Dis, thus marking Carid Et as forsaken. No one dared set foot inside for thousands of years. It took every ounce of martial strength in this fort to defeat the demon war party. And nothing is left to continue our defense. The prefect is dead. Her soldiers are dead. The civilians are evacuated. Only a handful of us remain. However, only one course of action remains for me. I have augured a force of Ceredominist sympathizers now on approach to our defenseless fort. Once the Icene arrive, we shall raise a shield and trap them inside with an overwhelming force of undead. Loyalist soldiers, traitorous demons, and righteous angels alike. Death shall make allies of us all. Trindine, knowing that she would not survive if she continued to use her powers and that her efforts would go to waste, 
should the enemy discover her, decided to enter a state of stasis to preserve her energy. There, she would remain for thousands of years. Nex. Nex marched her legion north towards the Marjorat ritual site, seeking to capture it before the next ritual, giving the Sarosian Marjorat an edge over the Zamorakians. Seeing Nex as a direct threat to Saradomin, the Temple Knights led a crusade to the north to imprison her within her own palace, thus proving their loyalty. The Saradominists built a temple over the palace that they named the Temple of Lost Ancients. Bandos arrives. Bandos arrived at some time during the first 2,000 years of the God Wars, seeking only endless war. He brought his forces from Hubiusk and claimed the lands of Feldip for his own, enslaving the native race of Skavids. Zamorak's forces expand. During this time, the Vigora's Folly, the Slayer Tower, was handed over to Zamorakian mages. In a failed attempt to summon the more docile Chthonians to fight alongside Zamorak's forces, part of the tower was blown up. While this was going on, Zamorak formed his own alliance with the Karamjan Pantheon. Fall of Sentistan. Around the year 2000, the wars were closing down as borders were being drawn and armies settled. Saradomin and Zamorak planned a final attack on the Imperial City, intending to end the wars once and for all. The Marjorat Wahisitel, the last of Zaros's legatus, attempted to trick the two sides into fighting amongst each other, but was unsuccessful. The city was overwhelmed, its defenders slaughtered, and its elderly left to die as those that could be were evacuated to the remaining cities in the north. Once the walls fell, Saradomin betrayed his Zamorakian allies, seeking to claim the crown jewel of the empire for himself. But the Zamorakian forces won out, and the city was theirs. With Saradomin's betrayal, the wars were renewed as the multi-god alliance turned against itself. Saradomin would try and fail many times to capture the city for the next 1500 years. For a hundred generations we have held the holy city against the armies of the usurper and the other gods. Alone among the armies of this world at war, we fight without the presence of our god, and yet we stand unconquered but our city now faces an unprecedented threat. The massed armies of Zamorak and Saradomin approach us at once, each larger than any army the city has repulsed before. Wahisitel's attempts to set the armies against one another have failed. With a heavy heart, I therefore decree that we are to abandon the holy city and retreat to the strongholds of Karalanga, Dariak, and Gorok. This will be a difficult transition, and discipline is essential. The elderly and the infirm will not be able to make the journey north. I authorize you to use all the necessary means to control the civilian population. Remember, our god is not dead, but rules from the Shadow Realm. Sentistan's fall is part of his plan. He has not forsaken us and will soon send us a sign.